Hi, hopefully you've managed to complete the test and now you're marking it yourself. Um, so this is the foundation test. Um, it's a lot of the harder questions are on both tests, um, but there are some easier ones to allow you to get a few extra marks. Um, but obviously it's quite a tricky test because the six marker is on both tests and so is the calculation question. So questions one to three are multiple choice. So the number of chambers in the human heart is four. So that answer is C. Which of these is a waste product of animal cells? So you need to work out which one of those the body gets rid of. So that's urea. We use amino acids to make proteins, glucose for respiration and oxygen for respiration. So urea is the waste product. How do red blood cells, sorry, what do red blood cells not have? The key here is that they don't have a nucleus because that means that they can carry more oxygen. They do have haemoglobin instead. They do have a cytoplasm and they do have a cell membrane. So again, the answer is D. Okay, so the answers are C, D and D. OK, question four. Um, we did this as one of the assignments and a few people got it wrong and I um, sent you some corrections. So hopefully you used the corrections to make sure that you have this right. So the blood vessel that goes from the lungs to the heart, so that's to the heart. So that's a vein. So that's a pulmonary vein. The one coming away from the heart to the rest of the body, the main artery there is the aorta. C is the one that comes back from the body to the heart, so that's the main vein known as the vena cava. And D is the blood vessel that leaves the heart, so it's an artery from the heart to the lungs, so it's a pulmonary artery. Okay, so those are the only acceptable answers. You can't just have artery and vein, you must be able to name those four blood vessels, the main four going in and out of the heart. So one of those blood vessels you've just named that carries oxygen blood, it's either A or B. It has to be one that's been to the lungs. OK, so it's going to the lungs, from the lungs back to the heart or going from the heart round to the body. OK, um, so A or B. Uh, the type of blood vessels that are in close contact with the cells are the capillaries, the really tiny ones. And then it wants you to describe one way that the structure of blood vessels are adapted to help with their function. So this is um, things about capillaries. OK, so they're thin. They're one that cell thick. Either of those will get you a mark. They've got gaps between the walls so that things um, like the blood plasma and the dissolved food can leak out and the waste products can leak in. And they have a very narrow lumen. They're about one, can just about fit a red blood cell in, which kind of slows things down and allows the gas exchange to take place. OK, so those have to be um, adaptations of a capillary. OK, so here is our six mark question. So this time we've got root hair cells are specialised cells on the surface of plant roots. They're adapted for their function by having long extensions that can extend between the soil particles. And that's the bit there shown as the root hair. OK, a root hair cell sh um, is shown in the diagram. OK, and uh, it says describe the function of root hair cells and why they are adapted in this way. So let's have a look at the mark scheme. When I finished, if it flicks on, just press backspace and it will pause with um, the question and the mark scheme on the slide. OK, so let's have a look at the six marks and then we'll look at how to get from one level to the other. So we've got adaptations explained. So if you've said that the um, root hair itself increases the surface area or increases the contact with the surroundings, uh, you can have a mark. If you then explain that that therefore increases the uptake of water or, or uptake, that gets your mark. Um, if you then relate that to taking up water, you need to say that it takes water in. So if you said it increases the surface area so it can take more water in, that's two bullet points. OK, um, if you comment by the fact that water is taken up by osmosis or even diffusion, you can have a mark. And if you comment on the cell wall itself having to be permeable to water um, to allow it to uptake that, that's another mark. 
It then says you can talk about the role of its uptake of minerals. So the minerals are dissolved in the water. So it, you can also comment on the fact that minerals, so nitrates, um, phosphates, are taken up by the roots. But these are taken up by the process of active transport and that those would involve carrier proteins um, would also get you a couple of extra bullet points because the, the minerals obviously are going against their concentration gradient. So they're going from a low concentration to a high concentration. So they need to be pumped into the, into the root. Um, <clears throat> another role, obviously, is that they absorb oxygen as well. That can enter by diffusion and that's required by the roots for respiration. And without um, air in the soil, the, so the roots become waterlogged. They struggle to carry out respiration. OK, so awarding yourselves marks for this question is a little bit tricky. So what I need you to do is to just decide which of those bullet points you've got. OK, now, if you've got one from the top two, that means you are able to get. Sorry, you need one from those top two. OK, and one from somewhere else to be able to get into the five to six marks. OK, you've got to get six bullet points. But if you've not got one of the top two, you can't score six marks. OK, right. Um, so. If you haven't met the increased surface area or it increases the rate of uptake, you can't have six marks. Um, you then need to have any six of those bullet points um, in there. As long as you've got one from the top two, you can have any of those to get five or six marks. The three to four marks, it doesn't matter where those are. You can either have one from the top two and one, um, two from the next one on the roll of water uptake, or you could have two from roll of up, uptake of water, two from minerals, okay, or any combination of the other roles, okay? So you could have um, one from water uptake, two from minerals, and one from other roles. If you've got um, three, then have three marks. If you've got four, have four marks, okay? Um, the last bracket is adaptation explained or role of water uptake or role of other mineral okay so basically if you've only got one or two bullet points you get one or two marks okay but the key is for five to six you have to have one from the top two as well as the others and you have to only get one mark per bullet point okay so if you've got six but don't include the, the um, top one of the top two you can only have four marks maximum OK, here is a simple organism, a cube measuring one by one by one. Calculate the surface area to volume ratio of this cube and it says to show your workings. So without workings, you can only score two out of three marks. However simple your workings are, you need to show them if it asks you to and we will not get the mark. So the surface area to volume ratio. So the surface area, each surface is one by one. So that's one centimetre squared. And then there are six surfaces. If you think about a die, there's six possible outcomes. So there's six surfaces. So it's one times one times six, which gives you six centimetres squared. The volume is um, width times depth times height. So it's one times one times one equals one. And that's one centimetre cubed. So the answer should be the surface area to volume ratio is six to one. OK, if you've just written the answer six, you can have the mark. If you've written it as a ratio six to one, OK, with, the, um, with words or with dots, that is also fine. So the next question, explain why very small organisms do not need a transport system like heart and blood vessels to survive. This is a really popular question that comes up at A level as well. And it's really important that you get your head around how to explain this. So. Very small organisms use just simple diffusion. OK, so we um, we did this with our little jelly cubes. We need so you need the word diffusion. So small organisms use diffusion. And the reason they can use diffusion is because they have a large surface area to volume ratio, which means that no cell is very far from the surface OK, or no body part. So diffusion is enough to um, supply the needs of this organism. Once things remember our jelly cubes where the dye didn't go all the way to the centre in the bigger cubes, but it went really quickly in the small cubes. OK, so 
hopefully you will have got at least two of those marks. If not, please make sure you make a note of the bits you didn't get, because that is a really important um, model answer. OK. OK, so we're looking at the stomata now on the leaves of plants. So it wants two functions of stomata. OK, they are required for transpiration because the water has to lead the plant through them. So it says you can accept water loss. So they need uh, to be there so that the transpiration stream can happen. But they're also required for gas exchange. It says slash describe for both of those. So if you've described transpiration, which is the, the movement of water through the plant and out of the leaves, that gives you your mark. If you've explained gas exchange and talked about carbon dioxide and oxygen being exchanged in and out of the leaves. Uh, remember, um, during the day, it's mainly oxygen coming in, sorry, oxygen coming out and carbon dioxide coming in. At night, the process does reverse and you get the oxygen um, coming in and the carbon dioxide going out because even when there's no light, the plant needs to carry on respiration. Part B is um, getting to look at some data. It's still relating to some so you have to think, you've just been asked what the point stomata are, so you need to think about that before answering your question. So stomata are counted on the upper and lower sides surfaces of three types of plants. The number of stomata per millimetre squared on each surface is shown in the table. What conclusion can be drawn from these results? OK, and what you should have noticed <coughs> is that all three have more stomata on the lower surface than the upper surface. Um, <clears throat> that is generally true of all plants because obviously um, that bit's a bit more sheltered for um, the sun just evaporating the water too fast. So that's one thing you should have noticed. You should have noticed that cl sweet clover has the largest overall difference, okay, the difference between upper and lower and red clover has the smallest overall difference. So any two of those three um, will get you the mark. Stomata were then counted. I've got the same um, stem of the question because it's still relating to that table, okay? So state which of these plants would be best suited to a dry environment, give the reason for your choice. Now think water is lost through the stomata, so you want the plant with the lowest number of stomata, okay? So sweet clover is the only acceptable answer, okay? And I would let you get, oh, I can't even let you get away with clover because there are two types of clover, so we have to say sweet clover. Um, and it, because it has the fewest stomata, or you can say it will lose the least amount of water, okay? So you need to comment on either that there's fewer stomata or it will lose the least amount of water. And obviously in a dry environment, you want to not lose too much water. Okay, so the last question is about transpiration and the reason that she has covered the um, soil with the plastic film is to stop any water evaporating from the soil, which means any water leaving that plant has to have come out of the stomata on the leaf. OK, so the water will be lost by transpiration only. OK, um, and she's found that she gets 0.5 grams in 24 hours. Um, which means that, um, and they want to know what you could do to conditions to make that go faster. You have to state and explain why that makes a difference. So there are different options. So you could choose that you increase the temperature and the explanation is that it increases the transpiration rate. Now the explanation is the same for all of these. So it could be increasing temperature, increasing the air movement, um, talking about using a fan or a draft or a breeze. OK, increasing light intensity, um, so making it brighter. OK, but you need to increase light intensity or decreasing humidity, because remember, that's where there's less moisture in the air. So once you've finished marking, what I need you to do is add up your total. And if there are any questions about um, questions you want to ask about this, just pop those in the comments and I will read those with your score and then I will get back to you. Um, if it's something that everyone needs to look at, if you want me to look at a specific question, please make sure you attach that as well. Okay, right. Good luck.